Well, it looks like we finally broke a deal or struck a deal with uh, these Bush tax cut uh, situation. They're going to be extended for another two years and unemployment benefits will be extended for another 13 months. And for people that make $250,000 or less, they're going to get an additional 2% tax cut in their payroll tax. That's great. But instead of people uh, applauding the president for working with both sides, we have people on the Democrat and Republican side complaining. But since either one, Democrat or Republican, want to be blamed for taxes going up at the beginning of the year, I do believe this deal or compromise is going to go through. The senators already passed cloture, which means uh, they have 60 votes in favor of going forward with the bill, and they're not going to filibuster it. And the House, even though Nancy Pelosi says she opposes the bill and a lot of things in it, and she wasn't going to bring it towards the floor, to the floor, I think not only will she bring it, but she's going to help pass it. Why? Because again, she does not want to be blamed for her taxes going up in the future. Um, I had a Republican friend of mine tell me that we should have just waited to the beginning of the year. Turn down the, first, turn down this uh, compromise that uh, Obama's put forth in good faith. Turn it down and wait to the beginning of the year when we have a majority in the House and try to pass a stronger bill on the Republican side with less considerate consideration towards the Democratic point of view. Well, uh, yeah, that, sound, that sounds good and everything, dumbass, but uh, have you ever heard of the word uh, veto? What makes you think that if we turn down this compromise that the president is willing to put forth when he's working with both sides and try to push a stronger bill for the Republican side, uh, what makes you think he's not going to return the favor with a veto? Yeah, dumbass. He probably is going to veto anything we push through unless we try to compromise with him now and show him that compromise is going to be met with reward and admiration and uh, uh, compliments. You know what I mean? Uh, and applaud. Applaud him for his compromise. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And as far as the Senate goes, uh, we don't have a majority in the Senate next year. So uh, anything we try to push forward without consideration of the Democrat point of view, uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So as far as that idea, I really think uh, you need to forget about it. And as far as the liberals go, if you want to pay more in taxes and you're conflicted with these tax cuts and because you don't believe you're paying your fair share, then go right ahead. I salute you, I support you, and I'll thank you for it. You know why? Because the, the Treasury, it takes donations. So if you want to pay more in taxes because you don't think you're paying enough, go right ahead and uh, take the money that you're keeping or the money that you would be paying in taxes and instead just donate it to the treasury. But as for me, I'd rather decide for myself what I'm going to do with my money. Uh, thank you very much. And as far as uh, people that say, all oh, these tax cuts are just for the rich, all oh, tax cuts for the rich, oh, it's not for us. Well, how about the people that get money or tax returns that don't pay taxes? Uh, speaking of the earned income tax credit for children, people, uh, some people that don't even work sit on the couch, eat bonbons all day, and uh, think about what flavor the next Twinkie is going to come out. Uh, they get tax credit. They get money just for having children. Uh, in income tax credit. Guess what? That's part of the tax credit. That's part of the Bush tax cuts. So if the Bush tax cuts expire, guess what? Those things disappear too. And as far as uh, rich people being evil, uh, I have something to say or ask you how many poor people do you work for I mean that is if you work I mean because as for me I work for a very rich company I mean they make a lot of money it's a grocery store I'm not gonna tell you the name but I work for a grocery store and I'm pretty sure the people that own that grocery store are rich and uh, I thank God for those rich people because if it wasn't for them I wouldn't be me I wouldn't be working I'd be on the government and uh, not that I'm saying that everybody in the government is lazy. I'm just saying that I'm glad that I have a job. And I'm thankful for the rich people that provide those jobs. And uh, liberals, why is it that you want to tax the people that are actually creating jobs? People that make $250,000 or more. 70 to 80% of our jobs are created by people just like that. Well, they make too much money. Well, how many people do you know actually enter or start a business in order to break even? Well, I'm waiting. Oh, I, I can't, because I can't think of any. Um, 
But if you can think of it, go ahead and write it in. I'll, I'll respond to this video by telling me how many people go into business to break even. As far as I know, people go into business for one thing, and that is to make money. To make money to support themselves, to live a lifestyle that they want to live. Not to break even. Okay, I know there are philanthropists and stuff, a lot of a lot of people that like to give money away. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot of rich people that give money to charity. Bill Gates, that evil guy, wants to give half half his uh half his estate to charity when he dies. Well, wow, he's something else. Can you believe that? And how about that Hudson guy, man? That guy is something else, man. How dare he? He wants to die broke. As a matter of fact, he has a, he founded and donates to uh, cancer research. He founded a don uh, actually a research uh, society or Hudson Cancer Research Society. He's how dare him? He's something else. What? Are you? As a matter of fact, he's Republican too. Man, the guy's evil. And his like I said, his uh, his goal in life is to die broke because he wants to give uh, his money so much money to charity. And his and his evil kids too. Oh my God, missionaries. Oh my, they care something else. Can you believe that? Unbelievable, rep evil Republican rich people. <laughs> Man, but I, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of I'm thankful for these evil Republican rich people that uh, create jobs, stimulate the economy, pay pay taxes. And as a matter of fact, those of you that aren't working, since they pay most of the taxes, a lot of the money that you're getting to sit on the couch is coming from those rich people. So I think you uh, might be happy for them too. But back to my point. The point is about these tax cuts and this tax deal. Uh, instead of complaining about the compromise that the uh, uh, Obama is willing to do, be happy for it. And as for the Democrats, this is another reason why you should be happy. Because if they have the effect that they're supposed to, which is stimulate the economy, because we're going to spend more money, create more demand, create more jobs. Uh, he's extended them for two years, which comes out to 2012, which means, oh, that's right, he gets to run for re-election. He'll probably put his name on those tax cuts because they'll no longer be known as the Bush tax cuts. They'll be known as uh, the Obama tax cuts. Right, that's right, huh? And if it stimulates the economy like he says it, it might, he just might get reelected and Democrats might just uh, retain some of their seats instead of losing more. Remember Clinton? He jumped on the Republican bandwagon in his mid after his midterm uh, election, his first midterm election, and guess what? He got reelected on what? Welfare reform, which is what a republic, which was a Republican bill, but he jumped on that bad way and made it a Democrat bill and got reelected. And a lot of other things that he did by jumping on the bandwagon, Republican bandwagon, or or moving towards the center, working with both sides, stimulated the economy. The economy did really good during his second administration, and guess what? He's known as one of the greatest presidents known, despite the fact that we've had eight bombings that no one remembers during his administration. Okay, but anyways, um, back to my point. My point is, we need to take this deal and run with it and be happy with it. And then move on to the next thing. Stop getting stuck on one thing for three, for three four, five months, okay? Let's just take this deal, applaud the administration, give it credit where credit is due. I'm Robert Gomez. And I approve this message.